for joining us for our PNC Women in Leadership podcast. We are excited to be here. Our 2024 objective is to foster a culture of active gender advocates that support women in leadership. And the intent of our podcast is to facilitate open dialogue on key topics related to inclusion in the workspace. I'm Sam Matthews. I'm a program manager in policy modernization. And I'm Heather Zahorski, lead development product owner for Core Auto Products. Today, we're excited to have a special guest to join for our Mother's Day special to discuss the experiences of female leaders with both employees and children. Our special guest for today is Christy Jones, Vice President of Policy Modernization. Welcome, Christy. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I would love to. Christy Jones, I've been with USAA for close to seven years, actually this November. I have close to 28 years in the industry and I am beyond thrilled to be here, especially as we get to talk about advocacy and women in leadership. This is near and dear to my heart, especially being a working mom for so many years. So excited to be here, you guys. Thank you for having me. All right, so today's podcast topic revolves around building awareness and understanding the gravity of the load often placed on female leaders who are also raising children and discussing how our advocate partners can support in balancing this load. We chose this topic as a homage to Mother's Day and because it's important to discuss the gender gaps that exist when it comes to the expectation of balancing both parenting and employment. So Chrissy, if you're ready, we are gonna jump in. Yes, absolutely. Awesome, well, let's break the ice. Christy, we know you're a fantastic leader in the workplace. Tell us a little bit about people that you lead in the home. Would love to do that, that's my favorite topic. So being a mama is definitely the core of who I am and that's how I identify myself and it gives me the most joy. So I have two kids. One is a 25 year old daughter who actually just graduated this past weekend from Texas Tech with her doctorate in occupational therapy. Congrats. So thank you. So from here on out, like we're calling her Dr. Jones and I'm, I'm gonna be the mom of Dr. Jones because it has been a heck of a journey. And so she actually starts her grown up job is what we like to call it in August in Austin. So she'll also be close to us. So I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited and so beyond proud of her. In addition to my daughter, AK, I have a son, Stephen, who is 21 years old, who is actually now a junior at Texas A&M. And he is majoring in sports management. And then he is then going to pursue um, law school shortly thereafter. He wants to be a sports agent. And so we, we like to consider Stephen, he kind of got the best of me and his dad, no doubt. He is definitely the equalizer in our family. We call him even Stephen because me, Shane, and AK are very high strung. He's the very fact-based, non-emotional one. So we say he makes everything better and runs things in our house. So yeah, super proud of both of them. How exciting. Well, thank you for sharing about your family. Can you tell us about a day in your life when you had to balance kind of those parental and corporate responsibilities at the same time? Yeah, I'll tell you. So I have a lot of examples there because as I mentioned, I've been in the industry for 28 years. And so one that always pops in my mind is I go back it's like 20 plus years ago when I worked at the Hartford and I was working part time and me and my husband were basically job sharing, which was another remarkable opportunity for us because no one was doing that in the industry. And um, Shane came home one day and I was sitting on the floor, I was sobbing. And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't be a mama and work, even though I was working part time. I was working six to 10 in the morning, working in the afternoon, Shane was working 10 to six. And I was like, I'm just not doing either well. I'm just not. And I don't know how to keep doing this at this pace. And so we sat down and we put down a lot of options down on paper. And we collectively came up with a recommendation for me to go back in full time and for Shane to be a stay at home dad and pick up some like um, consulting work on the side. So I went into work the next day and I put this recommendation in front of my boss and I was like, okay, y'all been asking me to come back in. This is what I need and this is what I wanna do. And they made me the offer that day. My husband resigned two weeks later. He was the primary caregiver for over 10 plus years um, for both of my kids. But I think really the important piece there was when we sat down to problem solve, it was never about what's good for Christy and what's good for Shane. It was like, what's good for our family? And collectively, one of us needed to be home with our kids. We were stretched too thin. And at the end of the day, like my kids are my legacy, 
not what I do here. As much as I love what I do, it's all about my children and it's all about our family. So we make that decision together. And to me, you know, when I look back at both of my kids who are remarkable humans, it was because we made that decision that day. Wow, what, what an amazing way to be supported by your spouse. He took a step back in his career. I mean, he chose to give up his career. We were on equal, like our trajectories were similar. Mine was, I probably had more runway, but he gave it up. Such an amazing partner. Thank you. Okay, our next question. So a 2023 study by Pew Research indicated that 48% of Americans believe family responsibilities are a major reason why women are unable to move up in their organization. How do you feel that parenting has personally impacted your career? Yeah, so I think that is absolutely true. I think it's hard to be a mama and work or work full time. I think as a mama, there's a tremendous amount of mama guilt that is really different than probably what your, your partner feels. And um, for me, anytime we have, I've taken new roles or I've moved my kids, I've also always put them in like basically the same school they were in previously because I felt so guilty. Like I was moving them because of me. And I, truthfully, I don't know if my spouse would have felt the same way. Parenting for me, it was my number one objective to be present throughout their entire, you know, 20 plus years. And I will always be a parent. And so as I was going through my career, I always looked at opportunities for me to still be able to balance work and life and still be present in my kids' lives. And so I looked for jobs that would stretch me. So when I was ready for that next step, I, I was going to be able to step right into it. And in fact, my first executive role was here. And my daughter was in college and my son was in high school. And I felt like, okay, I'm ready. I can do this now. And because I knew at the end of the day for me to be able to continue to move up, which I mentioned previously, titles never been important to me, but in order for me to be able to move up and have the, the level of impact that I desired, there would have to be a cost. And I wasn't willing to do that when my kids were younger. And so, but when I did get into this role here, I was able to hit the ground running because I'd set myself up throughout all of my other jobs to continue to stretch myself. But I will say as a mama, it's, it's really hard. Mama guilt is a real thing. It is a real thing. I think we live with it every single day. And even when my husband was at home and he was the primary caregiver, like I was resentful. I mean, I'm not gonna hit you. I was in the office every day, I was traveling. And I'm like, you're getting all this time with the kids that I don't get. And so, and my kids, I felt like they were closer to shame than they were to me. And it just, and then over time, as the kids have gotten older, they're like, but mama, we were able to do that because of you. Like, you're the one that sacrificed. And you know, they buy me girl balls that puts up on my desk at home. And they're like, no, you're the one. Like, you're the one we look up to. So, um, you know, I think you just have to stick with it and you have to do what's right in your gut. And to me, I always knew that it would be hard to balance both at the executive ranks. That didn't mean I didn't take opportunities when they were young, because I certainly did. That's an amazing answer. Uh, as a mom of two small children myself, it's difficult making that balance and determining where to take a pause and prioritize. And that is nearly impossible without having a partner that is willing to make sacrifices along with you. I spend a ton of time with young mamas. Because I think we feel, we put all that guilt on ourselves. And what I want to tell you is it's going to be okay on the other end. It's going to be okay. Just lead with your heart, do the right thing, be present for your family. And because you'll never get those moments back. You won't at the end of the day. We are superheroes. Yep. Okay. We're just working to raise responsible human beings. And you have an excellent job. <laughs> so Thanks. next question. Sarah Herman, president of PCS Marketing and Sales recently discussed how being a mother and a leader are surprisingly similar. She stated that to perform both roles effectively, she must encourage open communication, lead by example, set boundaries and expectations, and celebrate success. What are some things that our leaders can learn from motherhood? Yeah, so I definitely lead with my heart at home and in the office that can somehow be frowned upon but you got to make sure you're not making emotional decisions but as a mama i always believe that if you capture your kids heart um, they would always come back no matter what they might sway they might have their times you know in high school and in college but they would come back and you do that by being consistent by building trust by being credible 
by being a servant leader. You do that by picking them up when they fall down, having hard conversations with them. And so, you know, I used to tell them all the time, like, I discipline you because I love you. And all of those are transferable into leadership. My team is my family in every single aspect, but I have high expectations. And I expect you to be good humans. And I expect you to make good decisions. But the only way they're gonna do that is if they see it in me. So I have to lead by example, and I have, and they have to know I have their back. And so to me, it, it, those skills are transferable in life. And that truly is what makes a good leader. You build good humans at home, and you build good humans while you're in the office as well. Uh, and I, I love that thought of putting your family first because it's so often, you know, in corporations, they expect you work is the end all, right? But it's your family and, and work will come too. <laughs> it will come. Well, and even with all of my team, because I've been through this, like when they have an event or they have something with their kid, I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you here? This will pass. One of the things we've always looked at is there's a difference between urgent and important. If it's urgent, different. Like, we got to figure it out collectively together. If it's important, we'll get to it tomorrow. Like, go home. Be with your family. Do not miss those moments because your kids will remember you miss them. They just will. And this too will pass. And that doesn't mean I don't love what I do here because I love what I do here. But at the end of the day, what I do here is so I can foster and do more for my family. Like, that is that is just the truth. And so um, I think as long as you lead that way and lead with your heart and have the right level of humility and don't chase title, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be set up for success. So I love that. <laughs> Makes my heart happy. Well the next question is, you know, they say hindsight is twenty twenty and knowing what you know today and what you've been through, is there any advice you'd give to advocates in the workplace? Yeah. Be patient with mamas. They're balancing so much. Um they are already putting a tremendous amount of pressure on themselves because they're trying to take take care of the household and they're taking care of what's happening at work and be open have an open door policy listen to them don't judge them um because like and, and pay it for i mean you lived in their shoes give them that moment and tell them it's going to be okay but you know i look back on my 20 plus years of being a mom and once again nothing more brings me more joy and more heartache don't get me wrong yours been heartache just being a mama um, than being a mom and just give yourself grace for heaven's sake like as a mom that's the one thing we can do for one another and as an advocate you can also recognize that they're going through a lot right now and build them up and put them in the right position to be successful I've had ladies work for me and they're over their heads and I'm like what other role can you put them in so they can be successful like think outside the box but it is super important that you support them and recognize where they are Wow. I, I mean, thank you, Christy, for sharing your experiences with our listeners today. Um, thank you for helping us understand how motherhood has impacted your leadership journey. Uh, any last thoughts that you want to impart with us? Um, I just really appreciate this time. Anytime I get the opportunity to talk about my family, it's, it's a joy for me. Uh, I think I've said many times to folks, like, if you want to judge me, judge me on what I do at home because I have two incredible kids because I've invested in them and I've made my family a priority. And I have zero regrets as a parent. That doesn't mean I didn't make mistakes because I absolutely did. But I have zero regrets because we always kept our family first. And um, I think it's made me more confident. It's made me a stronger leader. And it's made me be able to lead with, lead with an example for others. And so I would just ask, if you are a mama, if you're a daddy, if you're a partner, if you're an advocate, if you're an ally, like take a moment and try to recognize that you can't always walk in everybody's shoes. So give some grace, give some grace and just, just be a good human. Just be a good human at the end of the day. Love that. <laughs> well, yeah. we definitely just want to remind our audience to join the conversation in our Slack channel at PM 